Hi guys, welcome back. So I am going to take some uh, stencils and some dyes, new, new to me dyes, um, from Honeybee Stamps and I am going to create a kind of groovy <laughs> card today. So I'm going to start with the stencil. Um, I'm just showing you all the pieces that I have cut out already and um, also my card base which is a standard A2 size card. So this van will fit um, or this trailer will fit on the front of an A2 card very nicely. Um, so I want to take the stencil which is the radiating rays from MFT and just temporarily tape this to the front of my card base. Um, I don't want it to move while I'm stenciling and I also don't want it to move because I'm using it straight on the front of the card. <laughs> so. Um, I decided to, to just tape the whole thing down completely, just to be sure. And I'm using a oxide ink to ink blend onto, onto it. So I'm going to use ripe persimmon, which I can never say. Um, and I will start off with a lighter hand. And um, because it's such a dark cardstock, being just a navy cardstock, um, it's... I could have been heavier handed with it, even though the oxide is a, a mixture of like a dye and a pigment ink, so it will sit on top of the paper, which is why I'm using it. But I could have actually gone a little heavier handed because it's um, because the base card is quite dark. If it was a bright white or a creamy color, it would have been fine um, with this layer. Um, the other thing that you'll see is that it didn't. I didn't go far enough out. So although the stencil doesn't fit across the width of the card, um, I still wanted to make sure that I had that sort of sun ray, that burst. That's kind of what I wanted, um, which just adds to the whole groovy thing that i got going on here. <laughs> this sort of retro groovy <laughs> uh, thing. <laughs> so I restuck it back down, um, which is pretty easy to do, and then just went back in with a heavier hand um, of ink, um, trying not to be too delicate with it anymore because I think I do that quite a lot. I don't just go full pelt and just see what happens. Um, sometimes I am a little uh, light handed with things and also going more out towards the edges and using a blending brush. This is just a makeup brush, but using a blending brush of some description means that you'll still get that softer edge where the rays kind of end, if that makes sense. So that's the front of the card done. And to get the tape off the back, just be a little careful. My washi tape tends to be quite sticky, <laughs> some of it. <laughs> so um, if you kind of get the edge up with your, your nail or your, your finger, and then just use your finger to kind of slide it back off, and then it actually comes off without tearing the card. If this was going to be stuck to another card, um, if this was just a panel, then I wouldn't worry so much because it doesn't matter. Nobody will see the back, but this is the main card. So I wanted to keep the back as neat as possible. So um, yeah, just be a bit careful when you do that. So to just add something, I think, to this, I'm going to use some brushed corduroy distress ink in the regular distress ink, distress ink, not the oxide, and just go around the edges of all the sort of main card pieces. There's some shiny ones in there. You'll see that in a bit. Um, so all the other pieces that are um, sort of normal cardstock, if you like, uh, so not shiny, <laughs> um, I'm just going around the edges with just a finger dauber um, just to get a little bit of ink around that edge and just give it a more sort of vintage, retro-y kind of look. So it's not so clean lined. Um, I just thought that would make the most sense for me. Um, and even the little awning, which is the piece I'm doing now, um, I'll show you how that works later on. Uh, there's little curtains, there's the um, the tire, the whatever the inner part of the tire is. I'm not very good with cars <laughs> or vans or anything. Um, the door, the curtains, uh, the windows, every, it's just everything's on this. It's so cool. And um, there's even a step, but I'll tell you a little funny story later on about that. <laughs> when we get there. So um, now that I've inked the, the main sort of pieces, if you like, I'm going to start putting this together. So I'm going to start with this green piece, which is the bottom part of the, the trailer. Um, and in hindsight, I should have stuck, there's a piece that will go above it. Um, I should have actually stuck these two at the same time. 
um, just because you'll see in a bit I get a little bit of a gap on the right hand side of my my trailer and I think that's just because if I'd stuck them together they should just kind of sit on top of each other um, kind of like an inlay but not um, or a puzzle piece maybe is more like um, and I didn't do that and of course I think my green one was slightly lower um, so it left a little gap but honestly you can't really see it now that it's done so <laughs> I'm not going to overthink it too much more but just so you know when you're putting this together because I always put these things together with you because I think well we can learn together um, and also it's just how I roll <laughs> so um, and so I'm just popping the tire on and again that just fits on there really easy all these pieces go together and sit together really really well so this is one of the shiny pieces this is a Simon Says cardstock that came in one of the kits um, and it's kind of like a rainbow shiny <laughs> piece that I cut down so on this is why I was saying on the right hand side it just wasn't sitting quite flush with that green piece um, so I think if I put them on together I could maneuver them and get them lined up a little bit better but I'm not gonna worry too much I got it on as best I could and I just kind of moved on <laughs> so, so just so you know I would put those two pieces on first and then go to your tires and everything else so the next piece I want to do uh, I think is my window which it cuts out this sort of rectangle piece and the curtains which I've done in the same blue so all the greys are the same all the blues are the same all the greens are the same so it all coordinates nicely so the little um, curtains will sit just on the edge and they fit again just perfectly on that edge of that little uh, grey piece or what I'm using as a grey piece for what would be the inside of my trailer you could obviously use um excuse my husband <laughs> if you heard that <laughs> big old sneeze um you could use like a yellow if you wanted it to look like the like a glow from the inside of the trailer but i i just kept it kind of funky i guess <laughs> and just went with a gray so for the back of the door <clears throat> there's an opening <clears throat> excuse me so I used the same grey cardstock on that to um, just to tie everything in. And actually having that extra piece of grey cardstock there helps to level the door because there's a the door is sitting on top of the shiny strip that goes across. So if I hadn't had that grey piece behind the uh, window part of the door, um, it would it wouldn't sit flush or like level. Um, with that so that actually helped it was a I didn't even think that far but it it helped <laughs> so so that was good so I've got the main part of the doors on and then I'm going to put the frame at the door and the window and then I'm going to put the frame on before I do the awning which is this little piece here so the awning has these two score lines and one edge is scalloped um, the scalloped edge is your decorative edge but the even though this is really tiny <laughs> um, it actually folded really really easily and I was quite surprised because I have sausage fingers so that was really quite nice and all it is going to do is sit just underneath um, the window so I'm going to get the frame of the window and the door on and then I will um, put the awning on so the funny story with the uh, <laughs> with the shiny sort of frame for the window and the door is that I came in I'd done all the, all the die cutting the day before and uh I came in the next day and one of my cats had not only destroyed the frame for the door but also you could see where he or she, I don't know which one it was, um, had uh, put some nice teeth marks into the uh, window frame one as well so I had to recut those and also there is a step that you can put in front of the door. Uh, I have no idea where that landed up so I didn't bother cutting it so there is actually a step that you can do um, for the like I say it'll sit in front of the door uh, but yeah I have no idea where that landed up so probably inside one of them I don't know or oh, a dread anyway so I stuck the frames on and just putting an acrylic block on top so that it can uh, let the glue adhere um, doesn't take very long and then I have cut the when you cut the door out the obviously the, the sort of window part cuts out but so does the door handle so I'm putting the same green that it cut out initially, I'm putting that back in there so that again it kind of creates a level and then I'm going to put in 
um, I cut it again in a grey or in the same grey and I'm going to put that on just so you can see the door handle. Um, you can do this in a, like a, well any colour, but you could do it in like a shiny silver or something like that as well. That would look nice. Then for my awning, um, now that the window frame is on, it just kind of hooks behind there. Um, so on the edge that's going to sit flush against the card itself, you just put some adhesive on there. Um, and you'll you'll know which bit it is because the the flap that you want to put the adhesive on the back of um, will fold down the same way as the decorative edge in the front. So you'll know you're putting it on the right way around. Um, so just getting that stuck on there. And I at this point almost thought, well, actually, if I got some toothpicks, I could make almost like the little handle bar thing that sort of propped up things like the awnings. Um, and then I thought we could also do the an awning. You cut it slightly, just cut trim it to the width of the door frame, and you could put one over the door as well. So for the inside of the card, I added a, the same grey just so that there's some way to write. Um, instead of white, because there's no white on the card, um, there's no black either. So I didn't want to use black ink and I didn't want to use white on the inside of the card. But I'm using um, Henry's, Henry Jr.'s ABCs from Lawn Fawn. Um, this is new to me. I, I, can't, I think this might be a newish um, elf of set. And I love the Lawn Fawn ones because they line up next to each other. You can just butt them up next to each other and the space in between each letter is perfect so I love that <laughs> so I started with have a um, and I'm using uh, ground espresso uh, distress oxide ink again because because it will stand out a bit more because it'll sit on top of the paper so I thought that would look quite cool and also the brown kind of coordinates with the tire which is also a dark brown not a black um, and then I grabbed the V uh, for some reason there's only one V in the <laughs> in the set so I grabbed the V and put it in place for the next word which I thought was very cool on my part um, and I'm using the right persimmon to stamp this word um, so it says have a groovy and then it'll say birthday <laughs> so <laughs> I thought that kind of worked with the trailer um, I also not, don't normally stamp on the inside of the card um, but I didn't feel that there was a good spacing on the outside to actually put the sentiment this time so I did it this way and I actually really like it. So, um, and then stamped again in the uh, ground espresso. So it says, have a groovy birthday. <laughs> so now that we've done the card base, I'm gonna use some thin um, foam. Um, I'm not gonna use these squares, I'm gonna grab the other one. Um, and it's only, when I say thin, it's not, it's not super wide, uh, but it's also not super high. So when I say thin, I mean as in it's not a high um, like profile, if that's the right word. And um, it's about, I want to say about a one mil thick or high um, foam. So it's, it gives a bit of dimension, but it's not super bulky. So when you go to post this, if you actually do that, um, then it's not going to, it shouldn't cause any problems with like postage, extra postage or paying extra postage. Um, so I like that um, about this foam. And this is just off Amazon. Uh, super inexpensive for a giant roll of it. And I'm still working my way through it. So, <laughs> And I've had it for months. So um, yeah, it's it's really nice actually. It's... So just getting that lined up now on the front of the card. Um, somewhat centered. I opened my card just because it wanted to keep moving. You know, when a card sort of, <laughs> for want of a better word, flaps open. <laughs> Um, so sometimes opening the card um, will just flattens it enough that you can can get it where you want it, get those elements on there. So there you go, guys. One groovy <laughs> um, retro kind of camper trailer card. So I hope you all have a groovy day. And um, thanks for stopping by. And I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye for now.